Um, for some of the people participating in the teleconference, uh, if you have any questions, uh, please, please feel free to uh, send them through to admin at scpaustralia.com.au and um, we can address them to the panel which will follow shortly. But next, uh, I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Michael Dumbarvin, uh, who is also a member of the National Executive Committee and provides the perspective of consultants working with contaminated site issues. Michael is a professional engineer uh, who has more than 30 years experience in providing specialist consulting services, corporate technical advice and conducting research. For the past 22 years, Michael has been engaged in contaminated land assessment remediation and management across Australia and overseas. He holds qualifications in civil and geotechnical engineering and environmental law and is a chartered professional engineer and a New South Wales EPA accredited site auditor. Michael is actively involved in the New South Wales branch of the Australian Contaminated Land Consultants Association and was president from 2010 to 2012. Michael is currently a senior principal with Coffee based in Sydney. So I'd like you to welcome Michael. Thank you very much, Paul, and good afternoon, uh, people linked to this webinar. Uh, it's not all about me. Uh, there's another member of uh, consultant representative on the National Executive Committee and also colleague who uh, sort of slogged away with me and the rest of the members uh, in the advisory board, and that is Steve Foss from President of Melbourne. So uh, Steve made a great contribution, as did all the other members, and uh, I think we've come up with a great scheme. I'm proud to be on the National Executive Committee and looking forward to leading this as a, you know, a great uh, change and for the benefit for Australian pro professionals. So how really will uh, professional uh, providers benefit? That's us, essentially. I think really it, uh, this provides a benchmark across the industry. It's something we can anchor ourselves to. Uh, we know how standards can change over time with technology and all sorts of things. Um, we know that uh, you know, we can have people designated with a certain title in one area and have a similar title in another, but really the experience of the people uh, in those two positions are quite different. This, the Chartered Professional status or chartered practitioner status is something that is common across Australia and uh, is not based on just a name. It uh, also provides a, a framework for professional development uh, across the industry. Competencies are there. So the junior staff who are coming up, you know, graduates uh, gaining experience, at least have a direction of where they should be looking to gain a well-rounded uh, uh, foundation for their future professional career. And anyone who's worked or been involved in contaminated sites will certainly know that it does require quite a wide range of skills to be a certified or to be a, a skilled practitioner or be a competent practitioner. And uh, that's part uh, that has been you know, built into the scheme as well. The scheme will reinforce standards and quality in our practice. Um, this is not an old boys or an old girls club for that matter. It's uh, one which has uh, a bit of teeth. It has a complaints review system and it is for the integrity of the scheme to make sure that that is upheld well. So uh, it's something that will be worthwhile. As um, Dennis said, this has been cooking for a while, but it's certainly not perfect by any means, and it's not going to stop changing either. So yes, uh, consultants around Australia do have some concerns uh, that will be raised for future consideration. And, and with the point of being constructive concerns, constructive criticism, there's uh, what about the recognition of an existing similar qualification there are a number of different organisations in Australia which have similar qualifications. I believe the context of uh, the certified practitioner that's being launched through SCP Australia is more specific than any of those other ones. 
uh, but certainly um, the assessment process needs to recognise the work and understanding that goes into other memberships. There is the financial cost of being a member and applying, but there's no particular benefit or tangible thing at the moment, I guess, other than a stamp, but I don't know that I'd want to pay that much for a stamp, but anyway. Uh, but we'll see how that comes out. But that's part of launching the scheme. We have to, uh, basically, we're stepping out into new territory, and I think that's something that we as practitioners uh, ought to give it a fair go and see how industry uh, responds to practitioners saying, yes, you can rely on my qualifications and experience. There is a cost in resources for competency and assessment. And throughout the contaminated land industry, the professional industry, there's already a fairly large amount of volunteer work that's done you know, through different associations and uh, even within companies. So I think the resources are there. We have to make sure that those people who do step forward are uh, recognised and uh, also that we put in a fair effort to make their job easier. And another concern is about um, people who are part-time workers uh, or others in small consultancies to meet requirements. We don't quite know how that will pan out yet. We are aware of it, we as the National Executive Committee, that is, we are aware of it. So it's a, a matter that um, we'll take into hand and listen for uh, people's comments as they come through. The other group who is a little affected, perhaps, by uh, this development and the launch of uh, SCP Australia are site auditors. But already those people are accredited out there. I'm one of them. Um, so really what I think this whole system needs to do, both from regulators, from auditors, uh, and also from SCP Australia, is to promote an understanding of the difference between accredited site auditors and certified practitioners. There is a, a distinct difference. There are a lot of similarities as well, but there is a distinct, a distinct difference. Perhaps there's even some potential for market differentiation between the two, where auditors could uh, perhaps focus on more complex and community sensitive projects where a uh, greater level of experience um, might be held. Um, I don't know, we'll see how that runs. And also there is, I see, a potential in the efficiency or improvement in efficiency of the audit process. Is as an auditor, I see a, a quite a wide variety of quality in reports that come up for my review. I would certainly like that the bottom end of that quality to uh, improve and, and gain a lot. So maybe that's uh, that's hope, and uh, so the auditors will benefit somewhat from having uh, a certified practitioner sign off on a report. I'll leave it at that and say thank you, and I hope to see a lot of participants in this scheme. Thank you very much.